Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last season, we examined the temptations that people have, their dangers, and how they should be dealt with. And this season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers that they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 51 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 52 in the RSV. Unto the end. Understanding for David. In this case, meaning that the psalm contains the knowledge of King David. When Doeg the Edomite came and told Saul, David went to the house of Achimelech. This refers to the story in 1 Samuel 22. Doeg the Edomite was the chief of King Saul's servants, and Achimelech was a priest. When Doeg told Saul that David had gone to consult with Achimelech at his house, Saul's constant suspicions were further elevated. This was one of the times when David was on the run from Saul, so the fact that Achimelech hadn't reported seeing him made him a target of Saul's suspicion as well. And in the end, although Achimelech tried to deny everything, Saul ended up having Doeg and his men kill the priests of God in retaliation. One of Achimelech's sons, named Abiathar, went to see David and tell him about this, which made him very sad, and he might have written this at around that time. Why dost thou glory in malice? Thou that art mighty in iniquity? Why do powerful evil people seem to enjoy being cruel so much? All the day long thy tongue hath devised injustice. As a sharp razor thou hast wrought deceit. The words of powerful evildoers are always causing harm, using lies to bring about injustice. Thou hast loved malice more than goodness, and iniquity rather than to speak righteousness. Not only do evildoers often prefer to do evil, but they prefer to surround themselves with other evil people, partially because evil people will hesitate to judge them or bring them to justice, and partly because other evildoers are easier to control and manipulate through blackmail and intimidation. Thou hast loved all the words of ruin, O deceitful tongue. Liars will take risks to use their words to cause harm to others. Therefore will God destroy thee forever. He will pluck thee out and remove thee from thy dwelling place, and thy root out of the land of the living. Because of their deceptions and the harm they've caused with them, evildoers will ultimately be removed from the world by God, along with the horrible results of their actions. Their homes, and presumably their possessions, are left behind for more virtuous owners to use. The just shall see in fear, and shall laugh at him and say, Behold, the man that made not God his helper, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and prevailed in his vanity. A description of the reversal of fortunes. In this life, evildoers often mock holy men and women for trusting God. In heaven, it will be clear that those who didn't trust in God are much worse off. But I, as a fruitful olive tree in the house of God, have hoped in the mercy of God forever, yea, forever and ever. The psalmist, King David in this case, repeats that he's determined to maintain his trust in God forever. He believes that God will bring about the reversal of fortunes and allow his servants to produce positive outcomes by showing mercy to them. I will praise thee forever, because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good in the sight of thy saints. Holy people recognize the goodness of God, so we should praise God as we wait for him to show his mercy to us. So, this is a psalm that questions the motives of evildoers, mourning over their eagerness to cause harm and their disregard for God and his commands, but in the end, the psalm is also about remaining unflinching in devotion to God and not being convinced to do evil. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.